I just want to touch on one other issue, Scott, um, quickly, since I've been seeing it a lot relating to this kind of tech censorship. And, you know, you, you kind of, it, you know, not to retread it, but you see it all the time, this kind of like idea that, well, you know, these are private companies and they should be allowed to do whatever they want. This doesn't violate the First Amendment, right? And of course, aside from the idea that like free speech, the idea of free speech isn't necessarily equivalent to the, the First Amendment of the Constitution, right? So in other words, something cannot technically violate the First Amendment, but can still violate the spirit of a culture of free speech, which of course all of this does. And as an aside, that argument is kind of pointless anyway, because we know that Silicon Valley is basically in like a symbiotic relationship with the government. And so none of these things are kind of purely market driven or market created entities in, in the first place. I just want to say like that I've been seeing this a lot and especially, you know, it comes from the same insufferable conservatives that are kind of losing their audience by the day. But I've, you know, you also see this amongst liberals and even self-styled leftists who just have totally betrayed themselves and eliminated themselves as any type of visible force. Like there is no such thing as leftism anymore. It's just, it's just liberals, you know, you know what I mean? Just supporting all this stuff. But I think it's important to, for people listening to understand like that you're being given these libertarian arguments about free speech. And the Republican Party has been doing this for decades, giving you this libertarian rhetoric to justify what's going on. And this has had like a really toxic influence on our politics for like two, two reasons. And the first is that libertarianism has no power in this country. There is no popular support for libertarianism the way it's popularly portrayed. There's not even a real audience for it outside of Washington, D.C. And that's crucial to understand because when you're being told, when you're being given these libertarian justifications for massive expansions of power, like corporate power, what you have to understand, what people listening have to understand is that libertarians never accomplish anything ever. Their rhetoric is pointless. Their beliefs are meaningless. It never goes anywhere. When Charlie Kirk goes out for Turning Point USA and gives this whole spiel about, you know, everything is about capitalism versus socialism and libertarianism is the answer to everything. You have to realize that like, he's not even getting an audience. And I, I believe recently he was kind of chided for that by some of his donors or something like that. Like Charlie Kirk got in trouble basically because Turning Point hasn't turned out anybody, right? All he does and all libertarianism does in America, the only purpose it has ever served is to run interference for the expansion of power and to apologize for the status quo. No laws ever get retracted. They never get unwritten and no red tape ever gets cut in this country, right? The only thing libertarians do is go to the people who are most upset by it and most immediately affected by it and tell them that they have to take it. These people are complete stooges for state power, which is ironic, and it may be hard to understand because they, they champion themselves as opposed to everything the state does. But the practical function of libertarianism in America is to serve as the vanguard of the expansion of state power at all costs, because the status quo never changes except in one direction. And when you complain about it, libertarians only show up then to tell you that you have no right to complain. And that's what they're doing now over this censorship. And it doesn't matter whether someone is a dyed in the wool libertarian. Even liberals are offering like technically libertarian justifications for like Trump being kicked off Twitter and massive bannings and suppression going on on social media. And when you stop and recognize like, hmm, this seems a bit cynical, that's because it is. And that's because that's the only purpose libertarianism has in this country. It's a cynical tool that people use to try to shut up their opponents when they don't like an expansion of power that negatively affects them. And the sickest joke of this, I have to say this real quick, just from being on Twitter a lot, is that even the kind of meme communism that you see on Twitter is, I mean, this is kind of a sad thing to say, but they're being manipulated by like effete libertarian DC rhetoric and wonks who have no popular support. Because when you 
style yourself as like, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to become a communist. I'm going to become a socialist, right? All that's saying is that you're buying into this ridiculous idea that America is this laissez-faire, libertarian, free market society, and that you're standing against it. And that's all I see now on Twitter for like months and months now. Capitalism this and capitalism that, and capitalism is the source of all our problems. In a way, just like conservatives and Republicans have been manipulated by this libertarian um, interference running, being paid for by the donor class and elites in America. The left, in a lot of ways, is also a foil, or rather there, they operate as a function of libertarianism. Because if you think that America is a capitalist country, purely, and it needs socialism in order to fix itself, or communism, it's like you haven't been paying attention to the development of American political economy for like the past hundred years. <laughs> the past hundred years, like we have not had a libertarian society, economy, or state in anyone's lifetime who is alive right now. It's the most absurd thing. So even they are being conditioned by this rhetoric. And the only difference is that they're signaling against it in like this comical way. But in, you know, they're still being controlled by it in that they're not really responding to the problems on the ground now, and even to the issues of class that are going on in America now, which is why so many of them are kind of caught up in this contradiction of having to hate Trump voters, because they Trump voters, in a lot of ways, do represent the economics of what they're trying to do. But these people culturally, religiously, racially represent the opposite of everything they stand for. And so everyone's being caught out having to basically respond to libertarianism. And in that, they're making this mistake that like America is libertarian. It's not. It, it's not. It's just a ridiculous thing to even consider or entertain for a moment. What's happening is you're being given interference. And that's what the Republicans have been doing for decades. That's what even Mitch McConnell does. We know Mitch McConnell's not a libertarian. He doesn't have a libertarian bone in his body. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. Nobody in power cares about any of that stuff. So, I, you know, I just I'm just I just want to say this because people need to know, like, how useless libertarianism is as a popular front for anything, but how useful it is as a kind of ideological shield for the kind of grab bag of state and corporate power that's been going on in this country for decades. And so that's what's going on when you're being told that, like, oh, this censorship doesn't, you know, it doesn't violate the First Amendment. Twitter's just a private company. They can do whatever they want. Like you know, you have to really appreciate the irony of like people using the arguments of like, quote unquote, libertarianism, which is supposed to be against the expansions of power directly to apologize for like the unprecedented expansion of corporate power. And with this talk of domestic terrorism, eventually direct state power. People really need to be aware of what's going on uh, when they hear this stuff.